Art and TV. It's 724 AM, so we can actually delve into a Kickstarter conversation um, a little bit earlier on, but it's okay. Um, we're getting into a conversation that we also over, you know, last week, and this is with regards to this particular report that was released by the Ministry of Education, the 2019 Education and Sports Sector Review Report. And uh, you've been having your say, and also the teachers alike do have their say. They're wondering, what are these issues that were covered in this particular report and did this particular report really highlight the welfare of the teacher and that's the conversation we'll be delving into today. Well the report showed that there had been progress in several areas although there were still some emerging issues in the education sector. Now to discuss this and more we are joined by the Uganda Liberal Teachers Union President Mr. Evans Mutesasida Kaganizo and he joins us right now on set. Thank you Mr. Kaganizo for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, first things first, do you think the teachers' most pressing issues were addressed on this meeting? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, the, the review has been on. A number of uh, education issues have been uh, touched, and uh, spe specifically to, to do with improvement and uh, especially widening the scope of assessment, uh, uh, raising the issue of uh, child feeding, Okay. in schools and emphasizing that stakeholders should take that one as a key priority and uh, of course the issue of continuous assessment was also given paramount attention of course however as as teachers as an interest group you find that some of the policy issues may not have directly touched on the improvement of the welfare of the teacher mm. And uh, specifically, when you look at uh, the issues of uh, widening the scope of assessment, it's nice, and that means more load will be going to the teachers. However, uh, there are issues, of course, as 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 as, in, as education as a policy, uh, education as an institution or a sector, there is a lot to do with the, the improvement on the quality of the teachers, especially continuous right. uh, in-service training. So, what you're saying is that the report just highlighted general. Mm. factions with mm. regards to the education sector but mm. didn't highlight the issues of the teachers mm. what exactly did you expect to be covered in this report with regards to the teachers welfare yeah of course as a teachers union uh, in uganda liberal teachers union we consider the issue of the the, the, the human resource and we consider a teacher as a, as a resource however in the management systems that exist at the moment especially in our sector you find that the, the human resource of the teacher is looked at as mainly an employee, a laborer, or somebody who's likely to benefit from the from the system, but not somebody who is there to contribute to the system. Mm -hmm. So our focus now would be how does policy come in to change that attitude? How does policy think about the improvement on the quality of the teacher, especially through uh, in service training, which should be cross cutting? Then uh, the issue of, uh, of course, the welfare of the teacher. You, you talk about child feeding in schools, but the question is, are the teachers feeding themselves? That's, <laughs> a <challenge. laughs> That's, a That's an issue as well. Yeah. All right, okay. So no. the teachers want to be fed? Definitely. As, as, as human resource, it's the, the duty of the employer to ensure that the, there is a quality of the employees, mm -hmm. and one of them is feeding. You, rem you remember that in, actually in most of our schools have been going ac across, especially in our primary schools, mm -hmm. the, the feeding is not there. There's no, there's no break tea, there's no midday meal, and whatever is there is miserable. Look at the quality of our teachers, even by appearance. Mm -hmm. They look emaciated. Now, the question is, if we are talking about the quality of the education system, the quality of education, uh, the quality, do we have the quality of the teachers who are delivering that education right. as a human resource? Okay. So th there are issues we have to address as, as a system. One would be that they go through specialized training. Now, when you talk about innovations in education and improving assessments and widening the scope, it means the teachers must be trained to cope up with those standards. And secondly, th then they also must be up to the, to the standard themselves. Of course, you don't, talk, don't give out, the, uh, forget about the issues of uh, better in uh, remuneration mm -hmm. and so on. Okay. Could better, could the fact that there is poor remuneration be the, the, be, the, be the reason behind the rampant teacher absenteeism? Because the sector review again called for more action against teacher absenteeism. Why, why does this keep coming up? 
Yeah, now for example, we are talking about uh, the teacher remuneration is, is an issue, but there is more uh, on teacher motivation actually than remuneration itself. Than remuneration. Now, for example, this uh, this this year we are celebrating World Teachers Day, and we are talking about that the, it's now that the young teachers should be the future of the profession. Now, if they are young teachers, it's not about remuneration alone. You can get money, put it in your pocket, but the question is now, are these teachers really motivated? Is the language used at school really conducive? So the teachers uh, are not showing up to the classes because they're not motivated enough? Yeah, I think uh, there is a lot we need to do as a sector on how we can put or uh, we can put mechanisms to ensure that the teachers are more motivated rather than even the salary that we pay them. Let this me ask important. you a question, um, mm -hmm. Mr. Evans. What's the language of motivation that the teachers would understand? Um, because you just know the other day, we're coming from a phase whereby um, just before we opened the first term, was it the first term this year? Yeah. Teachers won't strike. Mm -hmm. And they met with the president at mm -hmm. State House and mm -hmm. that strike was suspended and called off, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The strike was because, hey, we need a salary increment. Mm -hmm. It's long overdue. Mm -hmm. So what's the language of, of motivation if then uh, here you're striking, you switch talked a little bit, mm -hmm. you go mm -hmm. back to, you know, you laid, after laying down your tools, you go back to teaching. What's the language of motivation you understand or you want? Yeah, that one is there. Of course, uh, after the, the, the rise for salaries, I think an answer was given and the president came in and money was got and uh, uh, there is enhancement going on. Of course, we expect it to be ready by, by October in the second quarter of the financial year. However, uh, as, as unions, we also observe in fact, when we are meeting the president over the issue of salaries, there was one question which was raised. I think the president raised the question himself, saying, what are you teaching your teachers? And mm. that's a very great challenge. There is still a question from the community as to what exactly the teachers are teaching. What are we teaching? And of course, that one means that some, in, in a way, as we review the policy, as we try to update the teaching processes in the country, we need to be conversant and to be cognizant of the environment under which the teachers teach. Mm. Uh, you will find that in most cases, uh, the, the teachers the, themselves uh, the, the, the content, the way we deliver, and so on and so forth. How do we handle our children, and so on and so forth. Some of those issues, and you'll find that the teachers also have inherited that kind of attitude from the way they were taught. So the question is, are we teaching what is relevant to the community? Now, is the education sector re review focusing on that? Can we make the teachers more relevant to the community? You'll find that some of the children who go through schools very few can re try to relate to their teachers because of the way they were handled at school. Mm. Now, the question of motivation is very, very important, and it comes from the school managers, you can call them head teachers and other inspectors and so on and so forth. Then, what language do we use? How do we handle the teachers themselves? Do we consider them a resource, or we are considering them as people who come to benefit from the system? Okay. Now, so I, I think that that one needs to be given more attention than the issue of salary itself. All right. Okay, we cannot talk about teachers and not talk about the issue of the syllabus. Yeah. Would you attribute the poor syllabus to poor performance in schools and what can be done? Yeah, thank you so much. I think that it's not only about the syllabus, but the curriculum itself, the content. Because now the educational sector review is focusing on widening the scope of assessment. That means we shall not only assess the, 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 the theory content in class, but also go outside and look at other competencies and skills True. that the children can gain from school. And that one is very, very important. And for us in Liberal Teachers Union, we're also calling for a greater focus on the productivity of labor. Now, how can labor, how can labor be productive if the, the education sector is not looking at those productive skills, the practical skills that children must learn in schools? Therefore, the curriculum must focus on how can we widen the content in what we teach. Must we always rely on theory? Must we always rely on all? So we also need to bring about the practical content. And the practical content should also be looked at in the issue on the issue of uh, maybe curriculum. But more than that, more than that, you look at other sectors, especially some of the people who train in other sectors of the economy. Right. They, they, they train, for example, look at the army. Some of these people who train in the army are dropouts. And they train and they become very competent. That means that training skills 
and the initiatives and the way they handle the, 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 the people themselves is quite different from how we teachers handle right. our children in schools. But what do you think it will take for that to be taken up across the country in terms of you know assessing the practical skills of these particular children and you're saying that we cannot start to assess if the curriculum does not you know pretty much factor in that you know skilling hands-on kind of education system so what do you think it will take are the teachers ready to to take on this and do you think that the ministry is um ready to take up on such a kind of change in the education sector because you know number one it will need reskilling on the part of teachers and that is money mm -hmm. number two it will also mean that a lot of facets and factors will have to be overturned so to speak mm -hmm. so do you think that the ministry of education is ready to take up on that one yeah thank you so much now i talked about to, uh, in service training this mm -hmm. used to be there However, of course, it would be focusing on what you have actually acquired before and trying to promote it and make it up to date. Now, it's very possible because when you talk about reskilling, it means that the teachers themselves must undergo certain specialized training. It's, it's actually a pity and a wonder when you find that a teacher of the level of a master's degree, you cannot even run a computer, you cannot type your work and produce it. Now, if you cannot do that, how do you think the child you are teaching is going to cope up with such a skills? So the question is, there is a need to roll out, and the question that the policy must focus on, re, on, on actually repackaging the whole education uh, system. Now, if we have to be practical, we have to ensure that they can they can go alongside. Now we can have the theory, but also the practical part of it. And of course, as what we can see is that this one is very possible, but it has to go through training. Now, for example, somebody has spent like 20 years the skill that you entered with into the system is the skill that you still run up to now. So ideally you become stale. You become stale and that's why it's, it's actually correct for somebody to question what are you teaching. But let me ask you, when do you think this will actually take course? Is it just a conversation we are having or there's some action on the ground? No, I think it's not a conversation because this one is teacher uh, 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 generated because as trade unions we're also saying how can we be relevant? How can we become more productive? How can we become more relevant to the communities? Mm -hmm. Now, if the teachers are coming up to say this is what we want, I think that the, the system also must open up. The system will open up to ensure that the practical skills are also integrated into the system of teaching so that uh, we don't only learn the theory the, 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 and, and, and so on and so forth, but also how can we become relevant to our community. Mm -hmm. For example, when you go and the doctor treats you, you get home very happy and excited because the way he has handled you and he has answered the problem for which you went to, to, the, to, to, to consult. Now, in teaching, I think there is a lot more that we need to do on policy and the teachers, I think, it's very possible if these uh, trainings are on course and we reskill and, 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 and focus on the practical skills, you find that the system will become relevant to the economic needs of the country. Well, speaking of doing more, the Secretary Review Report also highlighted the issue of incompetence on the side of the head teachers, inadequate support system by the head teachers. What's your opinion on this? Yeah, I think that's what I, I hinted on, because when you, you talk about motivation, it is also an issue. Now, another point is uh, some people look at motivation. Of course, we have what we call negative motivation, whereby people, uh, the, 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 the managers just focus on intimidation, focus on threats as a way to enforce certain policies and activities in the system. Mm -hmm. But if it was done in a professional way and the head teachers were available in the schools mm -hmm. and they were seen to be practical, of course you have a challenge where you find that even the head teachers, they don't teach themselves. And now it becomes very difficult to motivate your teachers to go and teach when you yourself cannot teach. Mm -hmm. Then they have to be present. But of course there is also an issue of accountability and service delivery. Accountability. Especially mm -hmm. when the, the, the programs of government are coming in, uh, these programs reaching up to the schools. You have issues like USE, we have issues like U, UPE. Now there are funds government, which, which government dispatches at least now and again. But the question is, do these funds reach the schools? Yes. If they reach the schools, do they do the, exactly what they are supposed to do? Mm -hmm. So the issues of accountability brings about the issue of motivation, and then it will uh, tantamount into actually realizing what the education policy is. You know, 
early this year and I think borrowing from what was happening at the end of last year still having you know having these conversations with regards to teachers welfare mm -hmm. a majority of the teachers are actually calling out to say that hey the only solution to tackling what uh, Romeo pointed out to mm -hmm. teacher absenteeism mm -hmm. is making sure that you provide for them accommodation within the school Mm -hmm. Teachers are ready and they're willing, like you're saying, that uh, they're ready to even, you know, retool, to relearn mm -hmm. and to have all the skills. But do you think with all these demands now, even with accommodation, now you're telling us even teachers want to be catered for in terms of the catering and the food and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know the burden that the Ministry of Education does have. Um, do you think all this can be catered for or warranted to you in the near future? Or are you just being... You know, saying that hey, this and this, this and this, this and this, without being realistic with regards to what the ministry can actually, you know, do in yeah. this given period of time. Yeah, of course. See, the ministry also works hand in hand with other stakeholders. We have foundation bodies, we have other founders of education. Now, I think the issue of housing is also an important issue, which is part and parcel of motivation. And I think that one can actually uh, can can curtail the issue of, of absenteeism. So, if uh, all teachers are housed at their schools, and of course we talk about the decent housing, mm -hmm. not the small shelters. So uh, if they are housed at schools and I think uh, they are accommodated there, then that one can also reduce the, the issue, uh, the, the problem of absenteeism. And uh, yeah, of course we are not saying that uh, these things we are just talking about the imagination, mm -hmm. but we are, we, are, we are looking at the things which are real. You look at the past, those teachers, of course there were not so many, mm -hmm. but in the first place, most of them were accommodated there. So look at those schools which were constructed, these missionary schools we have around. Right. They had to take care that they, there should be decent accommodation for the teacher. But Mr. Evans, we know that the ministry works with a very tight budget. If you're, to, if you're given the list of, mm -hmm. hey, these are your demands, mm -hmm. which ones would be the top priority for you as the teachers? You have accommodation, you have the food, you have all these other things, you have a salary increment, the motivations you're talking about, retooling and relearning and stuff like that. So if you're given a list and you're told to pick the top three priority, which ones would you go with? Yeah, of course, it's obvious one of them would be salary because uh, salary is part of, uh, I think, primary motivation. But the, uh, the issue of housing also should be there. And uh, of course, uh, I talked about uh, the, this question of retooling. Mm. Because retooling will, will actually will, will come out to benefit the entire community and mm. the entire economy mm. rather than benefiting an individual teacher. So if there was retooling, the, the issue of curriculum, the issue of, of the syllabus and what have you, these things must change because we cannot talk of a revolution when the teachers themselves who must be the engine of the revolution are not moving at all. They are, they the, are the people who are supposed to be the engines of the revolution are not moving at all at that juncture please talk to us about the issue of qualified teachers some people think the teachers are ill-equipped to deal with the changing learning world mm -hmm. we now have e-learning exactly. what can be done yeah thank you so much i think the issue of the teachers themselves is, an, is also a paramount issue and i think that's why we emphasize teach, uh, i think training and retraining in the first place of course our education has been run out in the past when it used to attract the, the most poor academicians mm -hmm. into, the, into the systems, especially in the, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the early 80s. So it had been run down in the 70s. Now, I think that there is a need to refocus ourselves such that even when somebody is enter into the, the profession, somebody must be competent enough. Of course, when we have poor quality of the teachers, then you cannot have the best quality of the students coming out. Mm -hmm. So I think it's extremely important that the entry point I, I, I think we must go back to those days of the early 60s when anyone qualified to be a teacher would be the best qualified academically. Right. So that you, you are able to manage, you are able to manipulate issues, you are able to, 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 to diversify, you are able to cope with the changing world. Yeah. Well, in addition to that, what are some of the important issues teachers are facing today? Yeah, of course, uh, there, there are a number of issues. Uh, and uh, and as, I, as, as I've mentioned, mm -hmm. when you look at the, the school environment, the, 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 that's a challenge. You find the school environment. But of course, I, I talked about the, uh, the, the attitude itself, the attitude that these teachers get from uh, their managers, the head teachers, uh, even these inspectors and so on. Of course, we have a, a challenge that some of the managers think that by taking a punitive stand mm -hmm. is when you can improve mm -hmm. rather than making a motivational stand. 
So I think that's a challenge. And if that one is addressed, you find that the education system can turn around and okay. things can change. So you don't want to be bossed around. Now, for teachers to <laughs> really do their job, mm -hmm. um, yeah. we have to talk about the issue of the student absenteeism, especially the girl child. Mm -hmm. Poor menstrual hygiene management has led to high absenteeism in schools. What can be done to reduce this? Yeah, I think that one is also an emerging issue on, on, on retention. Mm -hmm. Because it, we can't have quality education, we don't have retention. When children don't get and, and qualify as they come out, so it leads to drop out now. And uh, I think as teachers, uh, we need to be more conversant with that situation. And sure, I think there's some time back, and uh, I think when Fajir Mali was still active in this ministry, mm -hmm. he was talking over the minimum standards in schools. And some of those minimum standards are not there now. You find that there are no washrooms in the, these days schools, uh, so the facilities are not there. So mm -hmm. we need to work out, and the, the ministry must also focus itself on this one to ensure that the dropout rate is low. And I think one, one other important thing, other than the girl child, mm -hmm. we're also having the boy child, the boy child dropping out of school mm -hmm. at a very high rate. I'm seeing a number of, of, of boys uh, getting out of school, going to run border borders, etc. Et so et that's it. the issue of poverty. So it's yeah, an, it's an issue of poverty, but mm -hmm. I think also policy must come in to enforce and make it, uh, I think, mandatory for the school going children to go to school because now it's like a bit uh, relaxed right. and anybody chooses to go to school or not to go. So I think, as with the, with the issue of this uh, UPE, whereby the four children are allowed to go to school and sponsored by government. Then government must take another stand, and I think the stakeholders must also get involved to ensure that any school going child must actually go to school right. because the, 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 rate of, the, the, the rate of dropout is coming up. Mm. Of course, with the girl child, we look at facilities and providing more as, uh, more of those uh, physical requirements, mm. but also we enforce the issue of these diversion activities which are taking away the boys from schools. All right. As we wrap this up, um, my last question to you um, is just a follow up. The last time we had you in studios, you were talking about the re-registration um, e-drive that the Ministry of Education took with regards mm -hmm. to making sure that now they do have a you know revised database with regards to teachers mm -hmm. um, across the country. How is that coming along? And finally, have you registered? Yeah, we are registering, and and I think it is getting more publicized because okay. more teachers are now registering online. And uh, I think that is one also one way of improving quality. So that if there are some teachers who had entered maybe wrong for it without the, the due qualifications, the right qualifications, they would actually be with a doubt. And and uh, and as, as we try to clean up the system, mm. then we can we can get better teachers who can cope with the standards of education. So I think that the process is now ongoing, and more teachers. Uh, and actually, as a union, we are also calling upon more teachers to register as quickly as they can before the deadline. Okay. Uh, so that whoever has issues, issues are sorted out at in time. All of right. course, there was a challenge, as, as, as we mentioned here, yes. that there is a requirement that you have to go and verify some of your papers in your previous institution of training, where some of those papers were verified some time back, and you have to go and re verify. But of course, that is trying to keep up to date. Mm. So uh, the, the process is ongoing, and we embrace it, and we hope it also work to improve our system. I'm afraid we'll have to leave it at that but just under 30 seconds yeah. just what we discuss mm -hmm. what is your final call to the Ministry of Education and Sports in relation to what we've been discussing here yeah my final call is that the Ministry of Education and sector must be uh, I think the, the, the sector must be dynamic and, and we have to be innovative and we have to transform that, that's the issue let us be practical and let us be more motivated to the teachers so that we can get the best we can get out of them okay awesome mm -hmm. all right Thank you so much, Mr. Evans Kaganizo, the President General of the Uganda Liberal Teachers Union right here in the country. Salutes and uh, we wish you all the best. <laughs> Hopefully the government will actually answer to your call. At this point in time, it's uh, 7.47 and it's time for you to get to know how the roads look like. So we do have Mr. Stephen Bede, he's in Zambia. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Mala. Thank you so much. Yes, this is in Zambia along the Gaba Road here. The sun is already bright enough, but of course it has come with a lot of traffic jam coming from the direction of Kabalagala, Kansa, and Gabunga. That is along the Gaba Road, mm -hmm. sloping towards this particular point of Zambia as you drive towards the sharing hall and towards the traffic lights of Zambia before you either link towards the industrial area through the Mukwano Road or before 